not often I get to wear wellies for a car buy review. In fact, I can't remember a time when I've ever worn wellies for a car buy review. But when the subject of the review in question claims to capture the essence of the original Land Rover Defender, well then you put fashion to one side and you embrace the boots. This, viewers, is the Ineos Grenadier. The Grenadier is the brainchild of Sir Jim Ratcliffe, a British chemical engineer, businessman and billionaire. He's got, for want of a better phrase, his fingers in many pies. As well as his work in the oil and chemical industry, he's bought football clubs, sailing and cycling teams, partnered with Mercedes F1 team and sponsored New Zealand rugby. But when Land Rover ditched the old Defender back in 2016, Ratcliffe saw an opportunity. He wanted to keep the magic going. He actually went to JLR and tried to buy all the old tooling, but of course they said no. So back to the drawing board and this is the result. There are a few familiar parts. There's actually BMW engines under the bonnet. And well, this thing is built in the same factory that produces the Toyota Supra and the Mercedes G-Wagon, a third party assembler. So, well, quality should be on point. But look, it's clear what Ratcliffe has used for inspiration. There's Land Rover at the front, there's Land Rover at the side, there's even Land Rover at the back. And well, underneath, there's plenty of Land Rover-like parts under there as well. But more on that later. It's a bit different in here, mind. Quite fighter jet-like, actually. You've got toggle switches and these kind of like big, chunky buttons all over the interior. There's nice quality to it, and well, whilst it is just a sea of buttons, I think maybe after a week or two in here, it would all feel quite familiar. It's probably better than just poking blindly at a touch screen. And speaking of which, there is a touch screen, but there's also a click wheel, a kind of BMW style click wheel down here, which makes everything up there pretty intuitive. There's a good chunky gear lever, again, that's very familiar, that's from a BMW, and a huge, chunky handbrake. There's a, a reassuring quality to that. And yet it's not completely devoid of modern touches. There isn't any digital dials. You've got a kind of greyed out panel back there which shows nothing more than the warning lights and the handbrake lights and like I've got on now the seatbelt warning light. But there is, as I said, a big 12.3 inch touchscreen here in the middle. Because there isn't any dials, you have the speed readout here on the right hand side and a few bits of key information underneath it. And then the left hand side, probably the left hand two thirds of it, is dedicated to the infotainment system. Now, it's not actually that bad to use. It's responsive enough. You can flick through the shortcut buttons and there's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it does feel a little bit small, a little bit kind of pushed over to one side. So it's perhaps not as, uh, as intuitive as you might like it to be. Other flourishes here in the interior, some models, well, an optional extra is this compass. You've got big grab handles here and another one up here. But how can we talk about this interior without talking about this panel of buttons up here? This again goes back to that kind of like fighter jet cockpit style system. You've got buttons for everything. You've got the differential locks, you've got the off-road modes, you've got the external power sources, assistance system, exterior lights. It's all up there and it's all activated by these kind of really tactile, really kind of solid feeling buttons. That is a really nice feature. For now, there is only one proper passenger version of the Ineos Grenadier. There are two and five seat utility wagons, but those are certified as commercial vehicles. So if you want one with windows all round, plus a few of the luxuries that you expect at this price point, we're talking well north of £60,000 or mid 70s spec like this, then you need to go for the station wagon. There's also the Quartermaster pickup, which Ineos says offers even greater versatility on rough terrain, but we've yet to try that. Go for the station wagon and you've got a choice of trial master and field master specs. The former is a bit more utilitarian with steel wheels, a raised air intake and off-road tyres, whilst the latter comes with alloy wheels, leather trim and other niceties. Of course there are loads and loads and loads of options, from roof racks to winches and everything in between. Full specs can be found in the usual places at carbuyer.co.uk. I mentioned earlier that there are a few Land Rover-like bits hidden underneath this Ineos Grenadier, and that's most evident on the move, whether you're on-road or off-road. You see, the Grenadier sits on a ladder frame chassis, which basically means you have the platform and the body sits on top, rather than in a kind of more modern road bias car where it's all welded together as one. And that should make it pretty peerless off-road, and believe you me, 
it's almost unstoppable on this, well, pretty challenging off-road route that we've got here. You see it's got that lifted suspension, the short front and rear overhangs, the low range gearbox. All in all, it's easily as adept as a Land Rover, either a Discovery, a Defender, you name it. This thing can go anywhere that those cars can go. But the trade-off is, well, often quite unruly road manners. If you've had any experience of a, an original Discovery or an old Defender, you get that kind of shimmy on particularly ruffled surfaces. But the Ineos Grenadier, to its credit, tends to hold things together quite nicely. It's relatively compliant, relatively controlled, and that's only helped by the engine choice. There's a six-cylinder petrol or a six-cylinder diesel like we've got here, both from BMW. And, well, this one's got loads of torque, so it feels faster than its near 10-second 0-62 mile an hour time might suggest. And again, I think that's only helped by the silky smooth automatic gearbox, again, from a third party. There's a bit more wind and road noise than you might like, but, well, the boxy shape and the off-road tyres, sometimes you've got to make compromises. One thing I probably wouldn't be prepared to compromise on is this steering. It's so slow and it takes a lot more lock than you might think. Now that's particularly tricky when you're off-roading and you want to make a tight turn, but it's even worse when you're parking. That is a real pain. There is an electric version planned and Ratcliffe even says they're working on a hydrogen fuel cell model. But for now it's just those two BMW sourced petrol and diesel motors. While they might suit the Grenadier's purpose, neither is particularly frugal. This diesel is officially rated to return 26.9 mpg and you can expect quite a bit less if you're towing or off-roading. With high CO2 matched to the lofty list prices, they're going to cost both company car drivers and private buyers a small fortune in tax as well. Direct rivals are few and far between, but the plug-in hybrid Land Rover Defender looks immeasurably more appealing if you want to keep a lid on costs. We mentioned the utility versions earlier, and while the, the more practical of the two of those does get five seats as opposed to two, it's still pretty rudimentary inside. These versions, though, the station wagons do get a little bit more knee room, loads of headroom. There's not much in the way of tricks or toys. There's a couple of USB ports and some vents. But the biggest issue about sitting back here, and it's the same as it is in the front, is the way you have to kind of hoik yourself up to get in. Side steps are an option, but, well, if you want that 264 millimetres of ground clearance, which the Grenadier has, and I guess there's not much you can do about it. Now around the back, the tailgate splits in two, but not like a Range Rover or a BMW X5. It splits down the middle, except it's not the middle because you've got this huge spare wheel to contend with. It actually kind of splits, well, one third, two thirds. And well, that's just not as practical as a hatchback because you need so much space if you're in a tight car park or you're parked on the street right up against the car behind. You need a lot of space to open the doors properly. But if you do, then you have loads of room for luggage. There's over 1,100 litres back there. That's almost 200 litres more than a Land Rover Defender. That's measured up to the roof line. And then if you fold the seats down, over 2,000 litres. That's huge. That's like a van. And there's loads of kind of practical touches as well. You've got some hooks down here, some hooks on the side here. There's an external power supply as well. And there's even a little handle here to open the boot from the inside, should you for whatever reason, get trapped in there. Right, should we round things off with some deal makers and deal breakers? The Ineos Grenadier has been designed to feel imperious off-road and it absolutely excels in this regard. It's hugely practical too, both in terms of passenger room and boot space. The Grenadier will carry everything you need and more. And then there's the engines. Ineos has brought in some of the important bits, the engine and gearbox included. Electric versions are on the way, but the six-cylinder petrol and diesel options suit this car quite well. That said, the Grenadier isn't a cheap car to buy or run. And given what you can get in this area of the market, that's likely to put plenty of people off. As is the general ambience inside, we love the design, but some of the materials don't feel quite up to scratch. And then there's our final deal breaker and something we've not yet found space to touch on thus far, safety. This is a tough car, quite clearly. While the lack of safety aids might be a benefit to some, family car buyers want to protect their precious cargo. And these days, simply fitting anti-lock brakes and traction control doesn't quite cut it. 
Well, there you have it, a charming but flawed alternative to the raft of big premium family SUVs that line our shopping centers and our school runs up and down the country. Fundamentally though, unless you're gonna take your car hardcore off-roading or you live on a farm, then there are plenty of, well, more road biased, big, luxurious family SUVs on sale that should be, well, well above the Ineos Grenadier on your wish list. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got another water feature to wade through. If you like this video, then why not watch our review of the Land Rover Defender or our SUVs playlist? Thanks for watching.